welcome to Friday. I'm going live today and we're talking about raising Christian leaders, our children, raising godly leaders for the next generation and just setting the example for our children today. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. It's a lot to take a little time out of your busy day to, to watch and I appreciate it very much. Um, and if you're watching on replay, I appreciate that too. I know a lot of you have been sick this time of year. It seems like there's something going around. So even if you're watching from your sick bed, thanks. So when I'm talking about raising Christian leaders and raising godly children, um, I, I wanted to first mention that uh, Joseph is the example of this that we talked about recently in church because he had decided to make God's concerns and God more important than his own concerns he was able to stand in a time of great testing and temptations so that God could use him later in his life. Um, and that's part of what we're going to be doing. He, he would be a leader, and he had those leadership qualities, and we want to develop those same leadership qualities in our children. So for the first tip for raising Christian children, be the example of a godly parent to them. Uh, I have heard parents say, oh, if my kids come out right, it's not going to be because of me. And they were sort of giving themselves a little excuse, like, I don't have to be perfect. You know, I can just pray and my kids will be okay. But it is imperative that we are a godly example to our children, that they see us reading our Bibles, they see us praying, they see us applying God's word in our own lives, they see us asking forgiveness when we've sinned against the family. Um, and so that we are that leader and example to them that we want to be glorifying God in our own lives and showing our children that he is powerful and real and able to change us, that we are new creatures in Christ so that our children can see that. And that is the example that we need to try to set for them. And we need to teach them at home. Now, I know I have a homeschool Christian mom channel, and you might think, well, of course we need to teach them at home. We're homeschooling them. But whether you're homeschooling or not, the time that your children are in your house, you should be being an example of a Christian parent, a Christian leader to them. So you can't just put that on the church or on their Sunday school teacher or um some other Christian person that you may come in contact with, that's your responsibility to teach them. It, the line upon line, little here, a little there, precept upon precept, that you're building in their life so that they have that good Christian foundation, that biblical foundation. So you're teaching them in your home. Now, I don't mean think that verse means that everyone needs to homeschool. I think that if you're homeschooling, you ought to believe that God has called you to be homeschooling. And I, when I was a leader in my homeschool group for 22 years, I would never recommended to someone that they homeschool against the wishes of their husband because it doesn't work. You need a united front as parents. So if your kids are in public school, you still need a united front as parents. I actually think it's harder to raise your children to um, in that environment and so that you and your husband will have to be very on top of things and know what's going on so you can deal with things as they come up in your children's life but you need to teach them at home and one way you do that is by having family devotions now at our house that meant that around 8 30 at night my husband would call us all into the living room and we had age-appropriate Bible books that we read to the children and then we would ask them questions so they could apply it to their life. And we might ask them, what did you see today that you think God had fun making? And that would be a good question for them because they like to be outside and I wanted them to be observant. And so they could think of things like that. Or what were you especially thankful for today? What happened that was that uh, that was a blessing of God's blessing in your life today? Because you want your children to acknowledge what God is doing in their life. Um, another way you can do it is by having a personal Bible study, teaching your children to have their own personal Bible study. Um, when they're young, usually that would be parent directed, but as they get older, 
6th, 7th, 8th grade, they're going to be transitioning to having their own Bible study. And there are lots of Bible study helps out there. And you want to have them where they're reading a passage of scripture. And then there's an application for their life. And they can write in their journal um, what, how they are going to apply the Bible to their life. Or what they want God to be working on in their own life. Um, when I was in 8th grade, my church had a read through the Bible challenge. And I did it that year, and I've read through my Bible many years since. And I think between 8th and 12th grade, you ought to encourage your children to read through the Bible at least one time, even if it takes them two or three years. If we're Christians, we say we believe the Bible, we need to have read it through and know what's in there. Um, and then another hint for raising Christian children and Christian leaders is to attend church together. Uh, as much as we could, we were always there at church. Um, my husband is a leader at church. Hi, thanks for joining me, Vicki. Good to see you. Um, he always taught a Sunday school class. I usually was in the nursery with the children or somebody else's children. And so, but we were there together. And unless somebody was sick, we were at church together. We tried not to... Um, Try, try not to miss that. And why is that important? Well, you're getting your children in front of other people who believe the same way you do, and they are saying the same things that you're saying at home, so they're reinforcing that. There'll be good examples at church of godly marriages and godly families. There'll be good friends for your children there. And so there's a lot of reasons to attend church together. And um, you want to set that foundation so that when your children are out of your home, they're going to look for a good church to be supportive to them wherever they are. Um, let's see. So if your children are only getting Bible study and Bible teaching at church, it's not enough. That's why I talked about earlier having personal Bible study and um a family Bible study together because there's a lot in the Bible and you want to have your children well grounded. Um, another way to raise Christian children and Christian leaders is have them work alongside godly Christian leaders. And how would that happen? Well, it would happen in ministry. So if your church has a vacation Bible school and your um, daughter is 14 or 15, have her work alongside another teacher in Vacation Bible School as the helper. Um, have her minister alongside someone else. It'll help her be a good teacher, and it'll help. Um, it gives value to her that she can minister to others. So we also, when we had work days at church, we brought all our kids, and they always helped. Now, they usually didn't want to work alongside of us on work days. They would pick someone else to work with. So my um, one daughter did plumbing one time with someone, and my other daughter helped with sheetrock, and we raked sticks and leaves and pulled branches together with other people, but this gets them interacting with other people that you can recommend as godly people with your children. It gives them that, and it gives them friends from different age groups, so there's a lot of benefit to it. And then, as much as possible, one way to raise Christian leaders and children is to help them to minister and serve others. Um, especially in this day and age, it's very easy to be selfish, and we don't want to be that way. We want to do for others and help others, and it's important for our children to be involved in that, too. Um, when they're very young, sometimes we make cookies and we bring it to a neighbor, and that's good. But as they get older, let's expand on those opportunities. So I put out on my Homeschool Christian Mom uh, Facebook page, oh, so how... How have you had your children in ministry? And um, we had people respond that had had their boys chop and deliver wood for people who are running low on wood at the end of the winter, raking leaves, helping a widow with her yard work, um, cooking, just making, a, I, we call them sunshine boxes. If somebody's been sick or shut in for an extended period of time, it might have a word find in it and some food. And um, I know one time we tucked in a box of Kleenex in the box um, because they'd been sick. 
uh, and a can of Campbell's chicken and noodle soup. Just some fun things in a box that, to encourage someone else. I had some more ideas here. Um, oh, making a meal for someone who's had a baby recently or who's just gone through surgery. Um, making get well cards, helping with gardening, helping to do chores, writing letters to missionaries, um, being a Sunday school helper um, at our church. Oh, I'm doing a lot of umming today, I'm sorry. Uh, at our church, we can have teenagers, as long as they've gone through our uh, program, we can have teenagers help with uh, the nursery, which is a big benefit if there's a lot of kids running around, and I need somebody with a lot of energy to help in there. So look for creative ways to have your children reach out and minister to others, and all these things together will help you to raise your children to be godly Christian people and leaders for the next generation too. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to also post this uh, blog post about raising Christian leaders. So that will be there and I'll put this on the YouTube. Join me at my Homeschool Christian Mom uh, Facebook page and group. I'm glad to have you and I hope you have a great week and weekend. And um, just Ask the Lord to help you, and he'll give you good ideas for raising your children. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.